before a meeting of the Smith County Financial Management Committee to order. I'm going to ask Mickey, do you mind? I didn't ask before him. Do you mind leading us in prayer? Yes, sir. Yeah, Lord, we just come to you once again, Lord, and count it an honor and privilege to be here today. Lord, we just thank you for the many blessings you give us, Lord. And Lord, we just ask you to be with us as we go through this meeting, dear Lord, that everything be said or done, dear Lord, and the decisions made would be the uplifting you and the pleasing unto thee. Lord, we just ask there to be one here under the sound of our voice today, dear Lord, that don't know you in the free pardon of sin, Lord, that something may be said or done. That they've come to know their soul's condition, Lord, and turn their life over to you for it's everlasting too late. Lord, we chase you to go with us, lead God direct, and forgive us, Lord, what we may fail thee. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mickey. Appreciate everybody being here this evening. We'll get started. We will go to the next item, which is the roll call. Miss Denton, would you please do that? Barry's Ned. Yeah, I am here in Barry's place. He was out of town uh, today, so that's the reason why I'm here. Jeff Mason. Here. Mickey Barrett. Here. Scotty Lewis. Justin Malden. Here. Cordell Smith. Here. Erica Ebel. Here. All right. We do have a quorum, so we will proceed. Next item on the agenda is public comment. We do not have anybody signed in. Is there anybody that is present uh, that did not have a chance to sign in that would like to speak? All right. We'll go on to item number five is the approval of the June 25th. 2024 minutes that is the first item listed after the agenda in your packet give everybody a chance to review those and take a motion to approve if it is a will to body motion to approve motion to approve by mayor mason a second second by erica any discussion all those in favor signify by saying aye, aye. any opposed Motion carries. Those minutes are approved. Next item on the agenda is the County Financial Management System Policies and Procedures. We're going to continue to review this. The original list in there of what uh, Ms. Denton presented to us at the last meeting is there first, and then you will see some additional pages, and I will. those are my proposed changes um, that I sent to Ms. Denton to be included in here. Um, nothing really super material but just a few things that that i wanted uh, added in there i hope i hope everybody's had a chance to review we don't have to approve anything tonight um and i'll be honest without representation somebody from the committee uh mr smith or mr lewis being here i would like to get input from them before we proceed with anything we've got to the end of the month so we may need to meet again with that i personally have a few things that i'm still kicking around in my head um uh, you know whether we need to include or change or, or adjust uh, does anybody else have any thoughts of anything that they've um, seen or think needs to be changed uh, in what has been presented so far Yes, so page 12, 13, and 14 are my proposed revisions. They're just included in there. Um, so on page 12, and I'll just go through them real quick, it would be to add to the existing section 2.1 sure. to add that. All that is stating is just it gives us some direction on how we proceed forward. Meeting quarterly is what the, and again, these are my thoughts. Meet quarterly on the third Monday of the month in October, January, April, and July of each year. Of course, we'll still have provisions if we need to do special called meetings um, as needed. Uh, we'll have those things. And then uh, the last paragraph there, it talks about the first meeting, you have to appoint a chairperson and a vice chairperson and the director of finance being the secretary of the committee. Uh, those all everything in that paragraph is statutory we have to do that anyway uh, so that's just pulling from the state statute uh, the reason I said October January April and July is because the committee will not be reappointed by the Commission until September uh, initially I had it as us meeting in September but just to make sure the committee is set and appointed I didn't see the point in the committee meeting in September and then potentially it being reappointed with new members who you know, aren't going to meet for two or three months. Um, so that's why I changed it uh, to, to October there. So that's just some procedural things, just so we this committee needs a formal, regular meeting schedule uh, that we need to get implemented. We don't need to keep meeting. Once we get through implementation, we're through 
through this part of the process, the committee's not going to need to meet as much or as regular unless unless it's deemed deemed necessary or there's something urgent. The next one uh, there's the conflict of interest, and that's really just adding a reference to again the state statute, the provision of what comes out of. Uh, the Financial Management Act of 1981. It does change the conflict of interest, con uh, the conflict of interest um, statutorily across the county. So affecting the road department, the county, the Board of Education are all covered by that new conflict of interest statute. So it, it applies across the board. And I don't know if there's any other policies or procedures across the county that it will affect that may need to be changed, you know, you know, the county general or the road department or even the board of education, um, since because this will supersede anything else that that is in place, um, because by the adoption of the eighty one act that that becomes incorporated into uh, into our policies and procedures. Any questions on the, any of those things so far? And then the next one on page 13 is just a, it's a small change. I can't remember how we we'll go back and look at 5.2. All I changed was what is italicized and underlined. I think it said something about, you know, at earliest convenience or as reasonable, as soon as feasible. I like specifics. So I feel like as soon as, as, as soon as feasible seems very broad and open to interpretation. So I just wanted there to be a actual time frame on that. So instead of, it's saying complete that form for emergency purchases as soon as feasible before the close of business the next working day following the date of purchase. So if something happens on a Saturday or a holiday or whatever it may be, the form doesn't, you know, and not it, it doesn't have to be done until they're back in the office, but the end of end of the day. And I know through talking with Miss Denton, most of the time those are usually done, you know, that morning following. Um, so I mean, it still gives gives whomever it is the. A full day to get it in but it's important for that information to get to her because the encumbrance and the finance department needs to record that uh, to the budget they're not being they're not being held to a purchase order or anything but it's just reporting hey we had you know over the holiday weekend or mickey you know when a snow comes through for his department you know whatever may be happening that they've got to do to get the get the roads cleared you know they've they've got the authority to spend that money it's just getting the reporting back to the finance department in a timely manner and then that entire page 14 is a new section and all i want us to do as members of this committee this is the first time that we're adopting this we're going through this just for us to formally adopt it and i do as a, as a committee we're adopting this and so i just thought it would be beneficial for us to adopt it and sign off on it as a committee y'all may disagree with that but i think you know at least this first time um this is you know that way they can all go back and be like who did this yes um, of course, if Why? you if you, you if you look at any other counties' policies and procedures, they are updated quite often anyway. Um, because we're you know things will come up or situations will come up or something. Won't, you know we didn't think something through, and you know we'll have to adjust uh, as we go along uh, anyway. But this first time we yeah you know, we want to we want to get it in the best shape that it that it can be in. Um, but yeah, those are those are just. Justin's opinions on those things. So, did anybody else have anything? Again, I don't. Justin's feeling on it is. I don't think we adopt anything tonight because I do want input from. And I don't know if y'all heard feedback from any of the other. I've talked with the, I've talked with a couple other officials um, about what was sent out. Um, the director did send out the proposed policies and procedures to the elected officials, department heads. Um, board of Education members, so everybody has seen what is on the table at this point. I think it is important that we get feedback from them because if this does supersede any of the policies, we do need to know how it's going yeah. to affect them. I've only had feedback from a couple of commissioners. They didn't have anything to comment on other than they didn't see anything concerning to them. Not had any feedback from anybody with the Board of Education other than a reply that it was received uh, from one board member. So would be good to to hear back 
I see a couple of things, just, I mean, in complete candor, I see a couple of things that I want to talk to them about. Mm -hmm. Nothing major, but it's mm -hmm. some things, some points of clarification that we mm -hmm. can make, but I need to speak with them before I speak publicly on sure. what that yeah. And, you know, I, what I would love to know is if there are concerns that are not part of the TCA reference that are something that we can do something about and work mm -hmm. through to make a plan together that works for everybody. Sure. I'm more than open to look at those policies, and I'm sure the committee will be, too, to... Mm -hmm. To try and make it workable. Okay. I mean, we don't want anything. The, the thing don't that want I anything to cause a train wreck later. Yes. That, you know, I, I don't want anything. I mean, the, there's certain things we have to do, right. and 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 honestly, there's a lot of things that we're silent on that state statute trumps anyway, right. and that's even referenced in there. You know, the bidding process is not overly detailed in here, but we've got state guidance on that, and those state statutes still trump anything we can't we can't override you know the bid requirements and you know the posting requirements and you know the, there's just certain things that they are going to be what they are because we can't deviate and the from statutory them. responsibilities so you know that's another thing that you know if there are anything in there that that I have in my policy that maybe is different than what we've been doing or or any of the departments have been doing it's because you know, after reading through the statute, if it's my statutory responsibility to make sure that it's taken care of and documented, I can't do that unless I include it in with what what I'm doing every day. So some things were included for that reason. Yeah, there, there are certain things if you look under the statutory responsibilities of the director that she's going to have to sign off on that she didn't before. Mm -hmm. But again, it's, it's covered as part of, uh, it's covered in the statute and we can't deviate from from what's in there so but we don't want this to be overly burdensome that's the thing that I, I want to see you know from these you know the department perspective is that's the thing we don't I'm telling y'all I've and I've over the past couple of weeks went through some other counties you know trying to compare it and see what they're doing with it uh, I spoke with a county today uh, and you know they approve every single bid y'all and I don't understand it the financial management yes the financial management committee touches every bid and and I just, I, I don't think that that's, you know, a, a way to streamline something uh, when we want to try to be efficient. We don't want to work backwards and go the other way when something, and make something less efficient. Um, we did open well, up to... I mean, how am I going to know if the school board's getting a good deal or if Mickey's getting, I mean, I, it, we don't deal in their stuff every day. So right. I mean, <clears throat> Mickey, you did. We did talk about maybe. Do we need to talk about the fifty thousand up in the bid threshold? I think that'd be a good thing. I have to go back. Does the statute require we have? Can we? We can just do that. We don't have to have a. That you have to. We don't have to have a purchasing department for that though. We can just do it under eighty under this. Yeah. yeah. I mean that's that's the will of this body. If that's what the body wants to do. I mean we, it's left at twenty five because that's what it is now. But. Like I, said, I mean, that's a benefit to go into this, though, is the ability to, to up well, that. Daisy and I discussed it a little bit this morning, and it would be, we, I, don't, I don't personally have a problem going to 50. I think that would be better because it would help on some year-long contracts. But as far as, you know, that threshold for having the three, you know, we need to make sure we get, we're still bidding or quoting stuff, you know, and, and it wouldn't prevent anyone that. from bidding under fifty thousand if they needed. Yeah, if you felt like you did, it would not prevent that. I mean, you know, at the twenty-five level, I mean, if, you know, if we buy a vehicle or you know a service truck, one for the farmers, whatever, but we always buy used. You can't really get a good used vehicle for twenty-five thousand if you're looking at a one ton, you know. So I mean, usually somewhere in around the thirty thousand range. So and it's hard to bid out a used vehicle. Yeah. Because the time you get to be as they may have been sold. Okay. Right. Y'all are the ones that deal with that more than I do, so. Would you mind discussing that with the director and seeing their thoughts on that as well? Sure. Like I said, I don't want to take that action without their right. list. How how often do y'all have bids in that range of twenty five to fifty? Very so. Okay. For him, 
and the landfill, and I'm sure they do too. With, so it would be a lot on those three departments. If we went that route, I know, and Daisy, you correct me if I'm wrong, in here, um, we didn't list anything about getting quotes over 10,000 or anything like that, did we? Because you, you sort of mentioned that. If we do up it to 50, I would like to see us at least get that's get quotes if we're not doing the formal bid at least you know show hey we did try to get as many quotes as we could right. and you may not be able to get yeah. well it's not yeah, less, yeah, it's, for, it's not in this yeah, policy it's not yeah. in this policy but it's in our policy yeah, it's yeah. In our we do like comparisons. right but how would you ever see that i mean as a practical matter i mean i'm just asking a question as far as quotes yeah like how i mean if they you, usually they submit it with a it back request. They you need another quote. <laughs> if, it's, if it's between that range of okay. ten and twenty five thousand, uh -huh. we'll usually ask them to submit something with their PO request that documents where they found their pricing. Okay. It can be a print from an ad online if they're searching websites, or it can be you know document just them documenting mm -hmm. something. I can go check. Um, which I mean, you know, their documentation is. I don't. I don't. Ever. I've never had an auditor have an issue with their documentation just being something that they put down. Or if they call, sometimes they call and they can't get people to quote it. But they'll document where they called and that they declined to, to quote and that, you know, sometimes we have to take that. It just depends on what's going on. But yeah, we can definitely specify if, if the, we can specify it either way. We, we probably need to specify something in here for that, be a little more descriptive so everybody knows what they should be sub submitting. And definitely, of course, if the bid threshold changes, we'll change this up. Yeah, I mean, that was one thing. That was one of the, the over 10,000 and getting the quotes is something I know the county currently does that wasn't in here that I had been mulling over, you know. Yeah. Um, we want to make sure that we're getting the best deal for the taxpayers, you know, and getting the best bang for our buck, you know. But if we increase that bid threshold to 50 and it's, hey, get these informal quotes instead of getting formal bids, that process is still easier. But mm -hmm. still, it's uh, it's still you are still searching before we just make a, a spur of the moment decision on something that's, you know, forty five, fifty thousand uh, dollars As long as we are doing right by the taxpayers in that, I'm fine up in that. Because, again, we want to be efficient, too, and I think that's a fair way to balance it. Any other thoughts? Looking at purchasing, because this is yeah. On so the county right now requires a PO for everything, and I believe that applies to the county. And I think the board of education requires a PO for everything as well. So we've got that two hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, excuse me, two hundred, two hundred dollar, yeah, two hundred dollar threshold. And the way that that's on page six, so the. This is something we haven't done before from, you know, what that does is it gives a little bit more freedom to go ahead and purchase something. You still have to submit the paperwork for the purchase for payment, obviously, um, but you just be doing it after the fact instead of getting a PO for it ahead of time. Um, this again is some, some counties do this, some don't, some's a little bit lower, so, you know, I've seen a couple counties at 250. Um, That'll be at the discretion of the department head and official as well. I've had a, I've had a, at least one department head say, you know, I'm probably not going to be comfortable with that because they don't want to give anybody the authority to do that themselves that's purchasing within their department. And I told them I'm perfectly fine mm -hmm. with that. This is no, you know, by no means a way to get that to happen. But, you know, whatever they want to see happen, we'll be going by what they tell us anyway. We were just talking about it earlier today. <coughs> You'd have to have a pretty good vendor. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I mean, you could do it with yeah. the Walmart purchasing. Yeah. I mean, because that's that's definitely a vendor that. But yeah, most of your vendors want their POs anyway. 
And while it's not required to have a PO less than 200, they can still get a PO for anything under 200 if that's what they choose to do. If an elected official wants to get a PO for a $10 order, they, they're not required to do it, but they can. the finance department will be glad to process that all day long if that's, if that's what they're comfortable doing. And I know I had, I had somebody who asked about blanket purchases, and that is covered under the, the purchase orders and invoice. Um, it's about maybe a third of the way down there on page six, but it does say blanket purchase orders for monthly or yearly purchases are allowed at the discretion of the finance director and purchasing staff so long as cash and fund balances are at safe levels for those allowances. I know the Board of Education does it, the other county departments do it. We've got open accounts at, you know, hardware stores or whatever it may be because when you have a maintenance guy that needs to go get something, they need to be able to go get it. And I know that was a concern was, well, what do we do if, you know, somebody said, well, what if they need to do this and this? They, they have to get a purchase order. So, you know, we have blanket purchase orders the for, the, yeah, for those vendors, you know, that those things will be covered. Now, if you've got to go make a large purchase order, you know, if you've got to make a large purchase that's going to exceed the authorized amount for the, the blanket PO, then that's one thing. But, you know, we, again, we want to be efficient. We don't want anybody to, to be strapped down and not be able to do what they, they need to do. And that was a concern that was expressed to me. So we do have that $200 limit, but we also have for those recurring things. And there's certain things that are excluded from purchasing anyway that are recurring things as well. And, and those things are, are listed on here. Um, so certain things... You know, you got to go buy gas. You got to buy gas. <laughs> you know, certain things are, are not gonna are not gonna be covered anyway uh, by that. So, is there, any, is there any questions on purchasing? Because that's where I receive most more of my feedback than anywhere else is on purchasing. Any other questions about anything else in here? <clears throat> Well, what I think we need to do, I, I still want to mull some things over. We need to get some more. I, I would like to see more feedback. We definitely want to get input from the Board of Education before we proceed with anything. Our implementation time frame, we're still, we didn't want everything done until August 1 anyway, so we've still got a few, uh, a few weeks left on that. So if y'all are okay with it, I would like to just go ahead and table this and look at doing another meeting here in a couple of weeks if y'all are fine with it. I'm good with it. Uh, two weeks from now is July 22nd. If that works or doesn't work for y'all, let me know. I'm going to have to have that week. Okay. What about July 29th? Is that when school starts back? next week <clears throat> it's the first day uh, what's the first day of school somebody know on top of their head I don't have it in my calendar it's August 2nd that, that first half of the day and then August 5th it starts so that Friday, you think the 29th will work for them, Robin? Because um, I know it's getting close to the start of school. What's Monday the 29th, so last Monday this month? I mean, as far as I know, I don't know of any conflict. Okay. I would keep it. 29th work for everybody else. I mean, if that's it, I'll take a... There are in-service days on the 30th and 31st, and there's an admin day on 8th one. And then the half day, she said, was awesome. Okay. So, but I, I think the 29th would be okay. Okay. Um, motion. Yes, I'll take a motion. We'll table this and reconvene. Come, we'll add this. We'll bring bring the specific item back up on the 29th. Got a motion. Got a motion by Erica to table this Second. and bring it back up on the 29th. Seconded by Cordell. Any discussion on that? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Still, aye. still the same five thirty time. Yep. <clears throat> I 
Okay, next item on the agenda is implementation date. And I will turn this over to the director. Um, all I did as far as changes was updated the um, downtime day and the implementation completed day to October 21st. Um, let's see, it seems like there was no change about... Deputy Director. Deputy Director appointment. We moved that to September uh, so that it could be in place before we implement it. So, anybody have any questions on any of that? We moved Octo to October 21st. Uh, we originally had it set for October 1st. I did get communication from the schools regarding payroll. Concerned about that. Absolutely valid. We uh, moved the implementation back to be behind the two perils in October, give them the days it will take to make sure that we're not making the computer system go down at a bad time. Because well, there will be one day of downtime to integrate. And they were fine with that change? I haven't heard any feedback okay. from anybody. Okay. So, October, so everybody knows October 1st is a payroll date for the Board of Education, right? Mm -hmm. First it's, and 15th. So, we can't do an implementation change on that date because the system can't be down on, on the payroll date. But then they also have to have the time to finish payroll and make their deposits and tax reporting and do all that. We have payroll too. They have payroll too. You know, so it's kind of a you know, shuffling, trying to figure out when would be the best time. This puts it after their second payroll that month, but in a time frame that we can work with. So that was why, what that date is. It's to, again, we don't, we can't have any hiccups or anything on this. It's got to come down at a day that, that is feasible and it can't come down on the first. It's just not possible. So. And then the, de the deputy director, and I, I had spoke with the director about this, it, uh, I feel like we need to have that position. We will appoint that position upon, that, so the way that works is the director recommends the, that uh, and then we approve that appointment. So we, can, we uh, can say yes or no to that. Instead of us waiting until October 21st to do it or October, we, go, we can go ahead and approve it to be effective the day that implementation occurs so that once we do implement, the deputy, the finance director, director of finance, excuse me, the deputy director will both be in their positions, whomever that may be. Questions? Concerns, comments? Yes, we will need to, yes, in, in order to stick to the timeline. So we do have um, the, uh, well, and going back, we may want to revise this. We did not hit that July 3rd notice that's on there. We may want to strike that. Um, it will be in, in the paper this week. Um, statute requires it to be in the paper one time. We just wanted it to be in there enough that way people had ample opportunity to be able to see it. Um, but the, the requirement is it just has to be published in the paper, um, a paper, a paper of countywide general circulation, uh, which is the courier is the only one that meets that requirement for us. So uh, it will be in there this week and the and the next three weeks, and it's going to give everybody plenty of time. They'll be able to. That's so why we got to have the policies and procedures done this month now because we are on a crunch because we need to make those available. That way, the employees of the county know. Uh, all the county departments, the county officials know, and then any vendors also know any changes. But as far as real, really from a bidding standpoint, we're not changing bid procedure too much. That would probably be the biggest impact to, to most of the, the vendors. That's not changing, but purchasing obviously will, will change and will be uh, placed within the hands of the central finance department. So that will be a shift for the Board of Education. So. We just want to make sure everybody is out there and aware and has ample time to know what's going on and be able to answer any questions. And hopefully between the time we publish these, we're asking for feedback. And I would ask everybody to continue to seek feedback. We won't have to change too much of this um, too quickly, I would hope. So um, I would ask, 
just so that we we do meet it since we did not meet that june 3rd notice for if we can get a motion to strike that and then approve um as suggested um rob and i'll ask you because i know this will affect the boe and they're not here and we want to try to get that implementation done we are moving the implementation date they're aware we can't do it on the first though because of payroll and you know this again once we start moving it because we have payroll and stuff too that we you know there's other things that we have to work around the 21st was just the next available time frame that was going to work so when we push it back that's got to go there you know or later than that it can't be any any I'll sooner i'll confirm the implementation date you're talking about the overall implementation yes. date, not the policies and procedures you're talking about the implementation yes yes that october 21st okay. yes yeah I'll, yeah I'll confirm that yeah and i can let you know yeah, and I mean we can again when we come back on the you know we're gonna we are gonna come back on the on the 29th again if we have to shift this. So the one thing that we said from the beginning on this was, you know, we knew some of this would move and change, and you know this was a this is a guide to try to get you through the process. But uh, thing things um, have shifted, so I, I would ask that we strike the July 3rd uh, notice in the paper since that didn't occur, and then uh, and let's approve it as is unless somebody else has another change. Got a motion by Erica to strike the July 3rd um, date on there for the notice publication and to approve it with that amendment. Second. Got a second by Cordell Smith. Any discussion on that? And before we vote on this, I do, the notice is on, that's the very last thing in your packet too, is that notice that will be in the paper. Wouldn't the, wouldn't that have had to have gone out today in order we just like to get some kind of feedback. Yeah. I mean, no feedback. We don't want it. somebody to, you know, we have to keep moving forward with no sure. feedback. Sure. <laughs> my, my only concern and reason for the question is that if that notice went out today, and you have gotten feedback from the board and that thing doesn't work i don't well, know well like we would have to amend we just yeah, yeah we can revise it to make the okay. changes but okay. i really expected feedback before then, today if they had some yeah but you know sure but sure. yeah changes could still be and made. i don't know that it matters i'm just saying yeah yeah statutorily we're only supposed to out one, one. Yeah, we're way ahead yeah we're, we're way kind of yeah we're way ahead of where we wanted so to be yeah if we need to amend it put out a different notice we can right okay yeah the biggest thing will be i mean if you know the we need to get the policies and procedures out there for everybody that's sure. the that's the big the big thing if we if the implementation date gets if we can get the policies and procedures done that's that's the the more critical deadline if we need to adjust that implementation date a few days which Miss Denton needs to know when it is, though, because she has to schedule the IT stuff and the changeover with local okay, government. Sure. You know, so we we've, we've got to get that. We've got to get something, um, something done on there. Yeah, I mean, and, I've already had to get on their schedule because you can't wait. Right, until, and and I do want yeah. to confirm if this date doesn't work, we will have to push it back further. It can't be before then. Um, I mean, it's possible. It, it would depend okay. on the software company. I mean, they may already have people booked directly behind me at this okay. point that would make it be months out. I mean, I, okay. I couldn't answer that. I didn't check for later dates. <laughs> okay. Just want to make sure. But we know, again, we know October 1st just won't work because right. of the payroll. Um, so that that original date will not work. So mm -hmm. I do have a motion in a second on the table um, to, to, again, I'll reiterate, it was to strike the July 3rd notice but then approve the revisions um, as printed there on page 15. Uh, the motion was made by uh, Ms. Ebel and it was seconded by Mr. Smith. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Right, that motion does carry. That's all that we have there unless we have anything else under other business. Oh, you put that, no that notice date, okay. <laughs> That's page 16. Um, so everybody is aware, so public notice is required by statute. Again, it does only, statute only requires, it says it needs to be printed in a paper of general circulation. It doesn't specify how many times. It only, it only gives two criteria for things that we have to do. It has to say that the county 
has adopted uh, the financial management system of 1981 and that everybody has to uh, abide by it by the implementation date and uh, when policies and procedures will be available uh, for the public uh, to be able to access. Uh, those will be put online uh, as the notice says and of course they will also be available in the finance department. Questions on that? All right. Any other business or anything else that needs to be discussed? This I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion by Ms. Ebel, second by Mayor Mason. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We are adjourned.